Hi, just a quick follow-up video on this Prema 6047 classic 1989 vintage or thereabouts uh, seven and a half digit uh, precision multimeter. It's like a metrology uh, grey one, you know, really expensive for its day, sort of top of the line. And uh, if you haven't seen the previous video, the teardown one of that and a bit of playing around, I'll link that in down below. So check it out. Now, I did mention in the previous video that um, it was slightly, it, it appeared to be slightly out of calibration. I would have expected it to be better than this, especially on the DC volts here. And uh, by the way, I figured out how to switch the uh, time here. It was easy. It was this uh, integration button here and I can switch that down and it actually... And I can switch the number of uh, digits there. So I can go to one second and then curiously, look, it's got a nice little uh, countdown timer in here. So it counts down to when's the next uh, measurement interval and does the update. Really quite neat. You can go up to uh, 80 seconds here. Anyway, in the previous video, I mentioned it seemed to be a little bit out and I suspected that might be due to the non-volatile RAM up the back here. And if that's lost its... Uh, memory contents, then that is, you know, that has to be where the uh, calibration constants are stored for this thing, because these are electronic calibration constants. There's no calibration pots in here that you tweak or anything like that. The only um, the pots in here aren't pots, are actually trimmer caps designed for the uh, uh, frequency adjustment on the AC measurement range. So, Nothing actually to do with the calibration at all as such. So the calibration constants must be kept in that non Dallas non uh, presumably yeah Dallas because they're the only ones who made it back in the day. Um, they were state of the art back in the day. We'll have a look at it, but uh, they must be stored in there because there's nowhere else to store it. We've just got an EEPROM. It's a 65C02 processor in there. Absolute classic. Nothing else. Constants must be stored in there. There's an internal backup battery in there which has a nominal life of 10 years. Uh, and then you basically have to throw the chip out because you can't replace the battery in the thing. Now, this thing, of course, is like in the order of 24, 25 years old. Now, I've personally seen these uh, Dallas non volatile RAM still working after 20, almost 20 years, I think, is the longest I've ever seen. But, you know, we're really starting to stretch it now. They're only guaranteed for 10 years. So really, um, I'm pretty sure the calibration constants in that are gone. But anyway, what we're going to do is uh, rip that out, have a look at it and see if it is actually blank and see if it makes a difference actually taking it out. Now here's the schematic of the main processor here and you can see there is the 65CO2. They've drawn it tiny because uh, they've got just the parallel data buses coming in and out of it. So you don't need to show uh, much at all. And they've got the other uh, miscellaneous stuff that you find in any uh, microprocessor solution based around the 65CO2. There's the EEPROM, there's the um, uh, main SRAM and here uh, U12 here is uh, the battery-backed uh, Dallas real-time clock chip. And basically what it is, is it pin-for-pin uh, uh, pin compatible with a regular SRAM chip of the same size, except that it's got a built-in uh, lithium uh, primary battery in there. It's not rechargeable, it's primary. It's got a guaranteed 10-year uh, factory life when you buy it. I, I think you can still buy them these days. I don't know, I haven't looked recently. But anyway, these, somebody on uh, in the comments previous video I wanted to know um, how easy was it to remove can you remove these things well yes you can because once you power the thing off okay this is the VCC here once you remove the power to VCC it's got internal control circuitry that detects that and then automatically uh, right protects the memory so as long as you guarantee that that power is off um, and it's you know, a split second later or something like that as long as it's off then you can pull that chip out no problem whatsoever it doesn't matter whether the right pin, pins float or, in, or anything like that now you'll notice that there is a calibration switch this is on the back of the unit here my one hasn't been fiddled with it's still got the cow sticker over that switch and as you can see uh, in the calibration protection position which is up it's just pull in that uh, pin it's pulling the not right pin permanently high so nothing can be written to that chip so you can't overwrite accidentally overwrite your calibration constants and other stuff which is uh, stored in there presumably on something like this it's probably only the calibration constants maybe uh, maybe they're storing like the last used mode or something like that perhaps but there's not much else in this thing that'll be stored and if you 
get in the back panel and flick that switch of course then it goes down to some of the uh, gated circuitry down here which can enable the right switch and you can go into calibration mode via the front panel and you can uh, set new calibration constants in there and calibrate this thing so I'm going to rip that out and we should be able to read that as a regular SRAM let's see if there's anything in it my guess is it'll be blank and I'll just get in there and check the rail I know it's dead, but you know, um, this is what you should do just to be absolutely sure that uh, there's not any residual uh, power left on that rails. It's not, it's dead, so that chip will be thoroughly right protected with the internal circuitry. So I can now safely simply remove that and whack it in my um, uh, EEPROM reader to check it. So I'm going to be really mean to this thing and I'm going to power it up with no chip in there. There it is it's gone so um I, we'll see if it's just got the calibration constants and it was reading out garbage before and it was happy to read it out then well you know everything's hunky-dory so let's uh, so it should power up exactly the same as it powered up before controller one it goes through it takes a few seconds but uh oh no error eight there you go no it obviously writes some uh data to that nah no, it, it writes some data to that SRAM and tries to read it back and there's nothing there. But hey, we could replace that with a standard uh, SRAM if I've got one. And there's the sucker. Look at the date code, 50th week 1987. And it's supposed to have a nominal life of 10 years. So um, yeah, you can see the outline of the battery in there. There we go. You can see it if you get the right angle there. There's the uh, lithium coin cell battery, like a CR, you know, 2050 uh, or something, probably stacked up and uh, soldered directly on there. And there's the chip poking out the bottom and fully potted, of course, so you can't really get these things and replace the battery. So if the battery's gone, of course, it's an SRAM. So if it has gone, there's no way I can recover the calibration uh, constant out of this thing. Not a chance. And by the way, no, there is no way that you can measure that battery voltage on the pins. It's purely internal. So all you can do is read out the contents and uh, presumably if the contents aren't uh, blank, then, well, it's probably got the original contents. But hey, they could have been corrupted if the battery's marginal or something like that. So I'm going to use my little Mini Pro TL866 uh, programmer you've seen in a previous video. Really cheap these things. Everyone should have at least one of these. I mean, it's uh, like 30 bucks or something. It's incredibly cheap. Now, if we have a look at the uh, software for this sucker, please excuse the crude screen capture here. But uh, look, it already it supports the DSR1220. We've got the 1220Y, but that's going to be close enough. I don't know what uh, test there means, but anyway, we're going to select that. Otherwise, we could have just selected any generic um, SRAM for the same size. Now, I'm a bit concerned about the test part of it there. Could be like test mode, as in testing a chip. And look at this, test range. Yeah, I don't like the sound of that so uh, we don't want to test it we only want to read the contents out that's all we want to do now let's say we selected one of the other ones here and of course we could go into uh, standard SRAM if we knew the size I haven't looked up the uh, data sheet yet but no these are test ranges too so maybe if we go into uh, standard SRAM down here let's choose a 6116 no it's got that test range as well so i don't want to test a chip i want to actually read it out so here we go if we i was in uh, sram uh, dram before i've now gone up into rom flash uh non-volatile ram there and dallas ds220 rw so there you go if we select that bingo we're not in the test menu anymore so yeah if we accidentally hit that oops we could have uh, screwed our chip if it was good. We certainly don't want to do that. So now we can use the existing tools here to actually uh, blank check and then uh, ver well, no, we don't want to ver read from chip. That's what we want. So it shouldn't enable that uh, right line, assuming there's no fault in the programmer, and we should be able to read that contents out. Anyway, there's the data sheet for the chip. Yep, it's the uh, it's the bog standard one back in the day, the 16K non-volatile SRAM. There you go, 10 years minimum data retention in the absence of external power. 
Um, and well, it's you know, if this thing was powered up for long periods of time, then it wouldn't use that uh, it wouldn't use the battery in there. But of course, you basically when you're looking at 10 years, you're talking about the shelf life of the lithium battery, lithium primary battery in there anyway. So even if you had the power off, it's still probably only going to last uh, 10 years or so. But as I said, I've seen ones last almost double that, but definitely not guaranteed. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's read it in. Yeah, the whole range uh, by default. It tells us exactly the orientation we want. Fantastic. It's all in there. I've made sure it's around the right way. And here we go. Read. Ta-da! Done. I, mean, yeah, it's, I think it's silly that you have to cancel, but anyway, it is done. And look, we have, we have data. Woohoo, look at that. There is 80. There's lots of 80s in there, but there is all this other data. Now, just to make sure that's not just a random gibberish, what we want to do up here is we want to go up and we want to re-verify that. <clears throat> so it will compare what's in the chip uh, to what it just read in. So yeah, verify successful. Yes. And we can just run that, just run that a couple of times just to make sure everything's hunky-dory. And let me actually physically take the chip out and put it back in and just verify it again. Yep. So there you go. We have actually successfully read the contents of that and it is not empty. Well, I'm actually rather surprised. Now, of course, we can't make heads or tails out of that, what stuff is stored in there, but it looks like it has several sort of blocks of data stored in there. So that'd be all of the calibration stuff and maybe some other uh, mode things or something like that. But yeah, wow. Okay, after what, 24 years or something? That battery looks like it's still good. Well, it's still got something. We don't know if it's actually corrupted the data, but usually these things will go blank. So look what I've dug out of the old junk bin. A6116 2K by 8 SRAM, 16K bit SRAM. Should be exactly the same pinout. Let's plug it in, see if the thing boots up without that error message. Because if I'm right, it is actually writing to the SRAM when it boots up and if it can't read it back somehow then it knows you know that error 8 is saying it's an SRAM fault. All right here we go I've got the SRAM installed it's around the right way yep let's power it up. Controller 1, 2, error 8 no it's exactly the same there you go so maybe it's not reading the uh, checksum that it expects or something like that so maybe our original Dallas non-volatile RAM is actually good so, I don't know, we'll have to read the uh, manual, I guess, see if we can get something on error 8. Bingo, there you go, error 8, error during self-test. It compares, as I uh, suspected, compares the checksum with the uh, one in the non-volatile RAM, that Dallas chip. So, obviously, for this thing to power up previously, that Dallas chip must still have the correct data in there. Otherwise, it uh, would give you an error 8 every time you boot up. So, hey, the Dallas chip has to be good. All right, so I'll put the Dallas chip back in and we'll power this thing up again. And uh, it's probably going to come good exactly like it did last time. So, yep, yep, everything's fine. So, I because it passes, that checksum is stored in that Dallas SRAM. If that battery was flat, then that checksum would be incorrect. And uh, it'd, you'd get that error 8 message every time you power up. So, it must still be good. Wow, after all these years, unbelievable, 1987, that one is, uh, yeah, 1987, 50th week 87, unbelievable, still going. But of course, if you really cared about keeping this thing going, then the first thing you would do, read the contents out of that, uh, save it, and then try and find a uh, replacement chip that you can reprogram, whack back in there. And yes, I have read in the contents of the ROM as well. That's a uh, 27C256, just your classic type. And uh, yes, I've got that uh, contents and I will upload it uh, into some repository on the net for those who need it in the future. Always do that with this old sort of gear. Now, there's one interesting thing to note about this meter is that even if this uh, SRAM here does fail, then it's not a problem because uh, you don't lose the calibration of the instrument because Prema have actually programmed the original calibration values at the factory into 
the EEPROM here. So uh, the manual actually tells you how to recover if your uh, battery fails in here. You can't get uh, your last calibration values, of course, unless they rewrite the ROM for you, uh, but you can get the original factory calibration values. There's a mode, you just flick the switch on the back, you power it up, and then it automatically copies the contents over to your new SRAM. <laughs> Fantastic. And for those of you curious to know if it's possible to turn the 6047 into the 6040i8, i.e. get that uh, eight and a half digit resolution, that extra one digits, well, it might be possible to hack the thing in the ROM to actually do that. Um, that could be a distinct possibility because uh, the only major difference between the 6047 and the 6048 is the LTC 1000 uh, voltage uh, reference. There's some circuitry difference in there, but you might, it should, in theory, probably have the same software and just be uh, limited to that uh, seven and a half digits in the uh, firmware for the 6047. So um, I've got the ROM dump here. And uh, as you can see, um, I've searched for uh, Prema, I've searched for 6047, I've searched for 47, I've searched for 48, and none of it's in there. Basically, it's all just gibberish. I can't uh, find anything. So you would have to disassemble it, uh, disassemble the 65CO2 binary file, and to be able to um, try and find that if there's a bit in there that gets uh, flipped or something like that. Um, and so I was hoping that, yeah, it'd be as easy as, like there'd be a string in there saying 6047, and you might change that to 6048, and then the firmware just uh, checks that when it boots up. But that doesn't look to be the case. Not that easy. So, yeah, not, not impossible, but I thought I'd give it a shot anyway. And if you're wondering why my room sounds very, very echoey here, it's because I am um, actually recording this at home and we're renovating the house. And I do actually have my uh, sound absorbing wall panels in here, but still there is no furniture in this room. So they don't uh, cover the walls 100%. So uh, really, we're getting some pretty bad echo in here. So there you go. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed that quick video. Catch you next time.